Hello class, I am Mr. Sutton, and today we're going to be talking about skill 10.6, which is equations of circles. So there is a generic circle equation formula, and that formula is x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared, where the center is this value h and this value k uh, without the negative sign here uh, and the r stands for radius so make sure you have this in your notes and we're going to go ahead and look at some examples using this so here, determine the equation of the circle graphed below. So we have our generic equation that we're going to use. And we're going to start filling in the things that we know about this circle. So first, we want to pinpoint where the center is. So it looks like this is the highest point of the circle, and this is the lowest point of the circle. So that's positive 7 and negative 7, so the center has to be right there. So that is at point negative 1, 0. So our means our h value is negative 1, and our k value is 0. Now we just have to determine what the r value is, what is the radius. So counting out from the center to the edge, here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which we could also determine going up, down, or left. So now we can just go ahead and plug these things into our generic formula. And we can simplify a little bit. Here we have minus a negative, so we can change that to x plus 1. Here, y minus 0 is just y. And 7 squared is 49. So for this type of problem, you just have to identify the center. And then from there, you get your h and your k value, plug those in. And then you can count the units to figure out the radius. And then plug that in for r. And then you can simplify a little bit, but from here we can just leave it like this. You can expand this x plus 1 squared if you want, but there's no real need to do that in my opinion. Now let's go ahead and look at this example. So this is what if, unlike this last one where we can count the radius, what if we have one where we can't count the radius? Notice that this point right here isn't quite on the grid line. It's a little bit off. The, so the point they give us is this one right here, this 2 comma 0. Well, we can't count boxes there because we're going diagonally, right? So we're not actually going by units. So what do we do then? How do we figure out the radius? Well, the, the center is given to us, so we can go ahead and identify our h and k. That part's easy. h value is negative 2. k value is negative 3. So then the radius, we have to use the distance formula. Distance formula is x sub 2 minus x sub 1 squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 squared. The whole thing is square rooted. Uh, so then we just need to find the distance between these two points, and that will give us the radius. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in my two points here. So I'm saying this coordinate over here is x sub 2 and y sub 2, and my center is my x sub 1 and y sub 1. So x sub 2 is 2, x sub 1 is negative 2, so I have 2 minus negative 2 squared plus y sub 2 is 0, and y sub 1 is negative 3, so 0 minus negative 3 squared, whole thing is square rooted. So 2 minus negative 2 is 4, 
squared plus 0 minus negative 3 is 3 squared. 4 squared is 16. 3 squared is 9. And then 16 plus 9 is 25. Square root of 25 is 5. So now we know the distance between these two points, which is also our radius. So r equals 5. So now we can go ahead and plug these things back into this equation here. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this distance formula stuff uh, to give myself some more room to plug that stuff in. So make sure you have this down in your notes before I do that. So when you plug it in, it should look like this. x minus h is negative 2, so x minus negative 2 squared plus y minus k is negative 3, so y minus negative 3 squared, and then r is 5. So a couple things we can do. We can change this minus a negative to just plus. And we can go ahead and square this 5. So we get 25. So, so this is kind of your simplest form here. Again, you could expand these binomials squared, um, but I don't think you have to for these type of problems because we are, when we're talking about equations of circles, it's better to leave it in this form because this tells you more about the circle, tells you where the uh, center is and it tells you what the radius is. So this is kind of the more standard form and This is Actually, what is called standard form or center radius form for equation of circles if you expanded all of this and had just separate terms um, With all these exponents fully expanded. That's called general form for an equation of a circle so this is standard or center radius form and if you expanded it it would actually look like this and then if you subtract the 25 to the other side uh, to set it equal to zero that is general form um, just so you know but this is the way you should put your answers into delta math this is the more useful form for our purposes uh, but worth noting the differences there so make sure you have that in your notes. And then last type of problem here, determine the center and radius from the following circle equation. So this is in general form here. Um, so again, in general form, it's hard to figure out what the center and radius is. So what we want to do is put it into center radius form or standard form in order to identify the h, k values and the r value. So in order to put it in standard form or center radius form, the process is pretty similar to completing the square. If you remember that, um, the first thing we want to do is move this constant term over to the right side, kind of get that out of the way. And we want to group our x terms and our y terms together. So I'm going to say x squared plus 8x. And then I'm going to leave a space here for a constant term. And then we want to have our y squared so plus y squared and then plus 18y. And then another space here for another constant term that we're going to add in in a moment and then the negative 72 that we moved over to the right side. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to throw in some constant terms that make this uh, a perfect square. Because if you think about it, our goal is to get this into x minus h squared form. So we have to think about what that h value has to be in order to do that. And so I am thinking that it has to, this h value has to be negative 4. So then we'll have minus a negative 4, 
which is the same thing as x plus 4 squared. And the reason I know it has to be 4 is if you think about if I expand this, so x plus 4 times x plus 4, we have x times x is x squared, and then x times 4 is 4x, four, 4 times x is 4x. And notice the 4x plus the 4x is going to give me 8x, which is what I have up here. So now I have to finish this out. What would be this constant term that I want to include in here? Uh, 4 times 4 is 16. So I want to add a 16 over here. Now i got to think about where is this 16 coming from? It is going to come from this other side. So if I do it to one side, I have to add 16 to the other side as well. And then we want to do the same process for the y's. Um, so if you remember from completing the square, kind of an easy way to come up with this number is you basically take this value right here, this 8, or this would be like the b value if you think about this in a normal quadratic, and you divide it by 2, and then you square it, right? So we take this 8, divide it by 2, you get 4. 4 squared is 16. So rather than like going through all of this backwards thinking and coming up with this number, you can just use this little formula, um, which we can go ahead and do that over here. 18 divided by 2 is 9. 9 squared is 81. So I'm going to add 81 there, which means I want to add 81 to this side of the equation as well. And we can check that. We can make sure that checks out. Um, so basically with the y values, what I am creating is a perfect square of y plus 9 squared. So if I expand that, y times y is y squared. Uh, y times 9 is 9y, nine, 9 times y is 9y, and then 9 times 9 is 81. So this middle term becomes 18y. And you have y squared plus 18y plus 81, which is what we have up here. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this work checking down here, and we can move on with moving our equation into standard form. So I went ahead and added up the numbers here on the right side, negative 72 uh, plus 16 plus 81 is a positive 25. Now what we want to do is go ahead and factor these quadratics that we have here. Uh, again, the reason why we did this completing the square method is so that we have these quadratics that are perfect squares. So this factors to x plus 4 times x plus 4. And then this over here factors to y plus 9 times y plus 9. So over here we have x plus 4 squared plus y plus 9 squared equals 25. So now here we are in standard form. Now we should be able to determine our h and k values. Uh, let's go ahead and pull up our general formula uh, for reference. So it's x minus h. Here we have x plus 4, so that means h has to be a negative 4. It's the opposite sign. Our k value, we have y minus k here, it's y plus 9. So once again, this has to be, k has to be a negative 9 because we have opposite signs here. And then r squared in that spot, we have 25. So r squared equals 25, square root both sides, and you get r equals 5. So our center, oops, our center is negative 4, negative 9. And our radius 
is five. All right. If you have any questions about any of that material, make sure you are asking your teacher for help and going to office hours. Have a good day.